Welcome to episode 16 of Run the Length. Before we get into the episode, two quick things. First, go check out my Patreon, where you can get access to early and exclusive content, as well as the custom status effects tokens I use in this video. Second, we have added a new token to the status effects set, introducing the new disease token. Going forward, all members of the token status tier will receive six tokens instead of five, and there is a new stretch goal that will allow me to backfill all existing token sets with the new tokens. Now on to the episode. My opponent this week is Zachary Gray. Zach has been on the show before and is probably the best Chicago player no one knows about. He was on USA's Team 2 for World Team Championships and plays Alchemists, Hunters, and Masons. At the time of this recording, Zach is ranked 13 in the United States and 44th in the world. I am currently 30 in the United States and 4th in the world. We select plots. My plots are Man Marking, Sikkim, Knee Slider. Zach's plots are Heroic Landing, Good Marker, wing back. I win the roll and choose to receive. We blind reveal captain and mascot. I select Grange and Peck, while Zach chooses Theron and Fahad. I am sticking by my plan with farmers to play Grange every time I receive, since that feels like the only time I can get anyone to engage on my terms. But if you want to see me play Thresher in this matchup, Beard Minis has just put up a video of me and Zach playing Thresher in the Hunters. Check it out in the description down below. I open up the draft with Tater. Tater is a staple, nothing new here. Zach chooses Hearn. I draft Harrow. Zach picks Zarola. Zach plays Zarola in nearly every game he plays with Hunters. The jog is super useful, and the ability to use Chain Bullas on someone, then link to Fahad and have him charge, is incredibly strong. I pick Millstone. Millstone's aura is one of the main reasons to play this team, so obviously she is in. Zach picks Egret to punish me grouping up. I pick Fallow. I consider playing Bushel here largely because I just like the model and I want to put it on the table, but Bushel's ability to protect the ball is not much higher than Peck's, and I think I need another beater to break through his team. Zach picks Chaska. He debates taking the bear for a bit as a disruption piece, but I can abuse its low defensive stats and he decides to leave it behind. The terrain on this board was generated using the Longshanks Terrain Generator. We have an obstruction at the top, a barrier, an obstruction, another obstruction, a forest, and fast ground at the bottom. Zach deploys from top to bottom. We have Egret, Hearn, Fahad, Jakar, Zarola, Theron who is kicking, and Chaska. I deploy. From top to bottom, we have Peck, Harrow, Tater, Grange, Millstone, and Fallow. Zach kicks off with Theron and loses a die for being in the forest. I allocate. I place two on Fallow, two on Millstone, five on Grange, one on Tater, one on Harrow, and one on Peck. Zach allocates. He places five on Theron, two on Chaska, two on Zarola, one on Hearn, and two on Egret. I activate Fallow, and she sprints over to the ball. Then she kicks it to Millstone with an extra dice from Grange's For the Family Aura. The kick is good, and I choose not to dodge with the ball. Zach jogs Fahad up. I activate Peck and jog towards Millstone and put Cocky on her. Zach activates Zarola and uses Midnight Offering on Egret to jog her forward. Then she jogs behind Fahad. I activate Harrow and use Look Busy to drop a Harvest Marker for free. He then jogs up in such a way that he is still protected under Tater's countercharge. Zach activates Egret and uses Flurry on Grange. Flurry hits, dealing 2 damage and poison to Tater, Millstone, Grange, and Peck. Cocky procs, preventing Millstone from taking poison, and she uses her aura to take Peck's poison. Millstone activates and passes the ball to Tater. She then uses Get Out and bumps Peck, Grange, and Tater forward. She places her Harvest Marker. Zack activates Theron and places his Forest. He jogs over slightly and puts Sunstrike on himself. He snipes Fallow, 
It hits, doing two damage and snaring her. He then uses a pinned on her, which also hits. Theron uses his heroic to take another snipe at Fallow, which also connects. I activate Tater and pass the ball to Grange. I hit it and dodge four inches towards Egret. This puts me in jog range of Egret for Grange's activation. Then I jog Tater up a bit. Zack activates Hearn and teleports him into the forest, then sprints him to the fast terrain. Hearn uses Blessing of the Sunfather to throw a skewer at Fallow, but it misses it. I activate Grange and drop the ball to Harrow, then jog to melee with Egret. I make an attack, knocking her down. Grange's second attack does 2 damage. His third attack does 2 damage. His fourth attack does a push, pulling her out of cover. His final attack does momentous 3 damage. I place Grange's Harvest Marker. Zack activates Chaska and sprints him over to the forest. This ends the turn. Farmers are leading the momentum race 3-1, to one, and I win the roll and choose to go first. I allocate and place 6 on Grange, 4 on Tater, 1 on Harrow, 1 on Millstone, and I pick up a Harvest Marker to place 1 on Peck. Here, I have heavily over-allocated to Grange. Zack allocates and places 5 on Theron, 4 on Chaska, and 3 on Hearn. I activate Grange and attack Egret doing 1 damage. His second attack does momentous 2 damage. The third attack does momentous 2 damage, killing Egret. The score is now 2 to 0. Grange jogs up to engage Fahad, attacks and misses. He attacks Fahad again, doing a momentous knockdown. Grange uses his last influence to place constitution on himself. He then places his harvest marker. This is a huge overextension with Grange. I overallocated to him, and it made me want to throw him at the other team. I should have just backed to the safety of countercharge. Zack activates Chaska. Chaska sprints, killing a harvest marker. He then uses Boombox on Grange, dealing 3 damage through the tough hide, and pushing him towards his team. Chaska then puts his trap down. He then puts Tough Skin up on himself. This positioning is great from Zack. Here he has prevented Tater from getting to Chaska, and has put Grange in a compromising position while also freeing up Fahad for a charge. I activate Fallow and clear conditions, then jog her away from Zack's team. Zack activates Theron and places his forest just behind Grange. This blocks Tater's line of sight so that Theron can go all the way to base contact with Grange without triggering countercharge. He attacks Grange, doing a momentous 2 damage and snaring Grange. His second attack does momentous 2 damage. His third attack does momentous 2. His fourth attack does momentous 2. His final attack does momentous 2 damage. He uses his heroic on Zerola, so she will get a free character play. I activate Peck, jog up, and place Kaki on Tater. Now Tater threatens to hit Chaska. Zack activates Hearn and reveals Wingback, declaring a charge on Grange. I choose to defensive stance and counter. The idea here is to prevent him from wrapping, so he has to choose a knockdown, severely hindering his damage. Hearn's charge wraps to the three, doing a knockdown and two damage, generating two momentum. Hearn attacks again, singling out and doing two damage. His final attack does four damage. He uses his heroic to throw a skewered onto Grange, dealing two damage through the tough hide. This leaves Grange on one. I activate Tater, glide, and declare a charge on Chaska. Zack declares a defensive stance. On the charge path, Tater procs Chaska's trap, but the condition is ignored due to cocky. Tater's charge does one damage and triggers sweeping charge, dealing another three damage to Fahad, Chaska, Grange, and Theron. This kills Grange. Score is now 2-2. Two to two. This is great because it prevents him from holding Grange hostage by not killing him until the first activation of next turn. Tater attacks Fahad dealing momentous 1 damage. His last attack goes against Fahad and I bonus time the roll hoping to kill the cat and I miss. This is brutal since with the cat knocked down I have a nearly 90% chance to kill another activation. Zack activates Zerola and jogs her up slightly, then throws chain bolas at Tater. 
He hits it, dealing two damage and snaring Tater. Zorola heals Fahad. I activate Harrow and kick the ball to Millstone. I then jog up so that his healing aura will cover Tater. Zek activates Fahad and clears conditions, then takes a parting blow. Tater only deals one damage. This is a pretty risky play since if Tater spikes to column three, he knocks down half of Zack's team. I activate Millstone and kick the ball to Fallow and dodge her forward with the successful kick. Millstone then jogs forward and drops her harvest marker. This ends the turn. Hunters lead the momentum race 6-0 and Zack chooses to go first. Zack jogs Egret back on at the top of the screen, then allocates. He places 4 on Chaska, 2 on Hearn, and 6 on Theron. I jog Grange back on the pitch near my goal. I pick up 1 Harvest Marker for an extra influence. I allocate, placing 4 on Tater, 1 on Fallow, 3 on Harrow, 2 on Millstone, 1 on Peck, and 2 on Grange. Zack activates Theron and places his Forest. Jogs over to Tater and attacks him, dealing 1 damage and snared. I choose to take the snared on Millstone, since having one higher defense, even for just one attack, dramatically improves Tater's likelihood to live, and if he dies this turn before activating, it is a disaster. Theron's second attack does one damage and snares Tater. Theron's third attack does a momentous knockdown. I choose to take the knockdown on Millstone. Theron's next attack does momentous two damage. His fifth attack does three damage. His final attack does 1 damage. Theron uses Blessing of the Sunfather to pin Tater. This leaves Tater on 4 health. The pinned is really good here, since it prevents Tater from walking away into the protection of the Fallow Aura. I activate Tater and attack Theron. Zack declares a counterattack. Tater does 1 damage to Theron. Theron's counterattack does 1 damage back. Tater's second attack does a mow down on Theron and Chaska. His third attack goes against Chaska, doing two damage. His final attack does two damage to Chaska. Tater heals himself and uses cropping to eat a harvest marker for another three hit points. Zack activates Chaska, forfeits movement to stand up, and shoots his boombox at Tater, doing four damage, then does it again for another four damage. He drops the trap right behind Tater. I activate Millstone in clear conditions. She drops her Harvest Marker, glides, and charges Theron. Zack declares a defensive stance. Millstone wraps by one, dealing four damage and making two momentum. We realize now that I could not have come into Theron without triggering the Chaska Trap, so we back her up to Max Melee. I consider healing Tater, but Fahad kills him almost no matter what I do. Zack charges Tater with Fahad doing 8 damage and making 2 momentum. This kills Tater. Score is now 2 to 4. I activate Grange and sprint up. I drop his Harvest Marker. He places Constitution on Fallow. Zack activates Hearn and teleports through the forest. He attacks Millstone doing 2 damage. Hearn's last attack singles out Millstone. Hearn puts Blessing on Zarola. He heals Chaska. I activate Harrow. Harrow drops a Harvest Marker for being near Grange. He tools up Fallow, then charges Theron. He knocks Theron down. Zack activates Egret and heals her, then jogs her up to the cover. Peck jogs and places Kaki on Millstone, then clears her conditions. It's important to note here that the clear is important because she can't absorb a condition she is suffering. The Kaki here really prevents a lot of the work that Zack can still do with Zerola. Zack activates Zerola and jogs Hearn out with Midnight Offering. She then jogs behind Theron. I activate Fallow and use Making Hay to trade two Harvest Markers for four influence allocated to her. She drops the ball to Peck, then uses Glide and a Sprint to get to Theron. She attacks Theron doing four damage. She attacks again, doing 3 damage. Her third attack does 3 damage. Her final attack wraps, killing Theron and generating 2 momentum. I play Man Marking. The score is now 4-4. Four to four. This ends the turn. Farmers are leading the momentum race 5-0, and I win the roll automatically. 
I choose to go first. I jog Tater Beck on through the fast terrain. I allocate placing one on Peck, three on Harrow, three on Millstone, one on Fallow, two on Tater, and four on Grange. Zack allocates. He places two on Egret, three on Theron, three on Hearn, and four on Chaska. I activate Harrow and jog to engage Chaska. Harrow attacks Chaska, dealing one damage. Harrow's second attack does a push. His final attack does another push, moving Chaska into melee with Millstone. Zack activates Chaska and drops a trap behind Millstone. He then uses Boombox on Millstone and bonus times the roll back to two dice. He hits it, pushing Millstone and dealing four damage. The push makes her take Snared from the trap he placed. This triggers between a rock on Fallow, and she jogs up in an attempt to hold Chaska in place. Chaska jogs to Max Melee of Fallow and tries to throw a boombox at her, but misses. I activate Grange and sprint to engage Chaska. I attack him and do a momentous Honest Labor. Grange's second attack does two damage and a knockdown. With his last influence, he puts Constitution on Fallow. Grange heals himself. Grange places his Harvest Marker and uses his Legendary to put up the Sturdy Aura and places two more Harvest Markers. Zack activates Hearn and sprints over to Fallow, destroying a Harvest Marker on the way. He attacks her doing a Momentous Singled Out. He attacks again, wrapping by one, doing another Singled Out for Momentum, and skewering her, putting two damage through Toughhide and snaring her. He puts Blessing of the Sunfather on Zorola. Tater activates, glides, and charges Hearn. Tater does momentous 2 damage and triggers sweeping charge for another 3 damage on him. Tater uses cropping to heal 3 hit points. Zack activates Zorola and uses Midnight Offering to jog Fahad out of melee. Fallow's parting blow does 1 damage. Zorola engages Fallow and uses Linked to activate Fahad. Fahad clears conditions and charges Fallow. I declare a defensive stance to go back up to def 4. Fahad wraps to the 3 and does 4 damage and makes 2 momentum. I activate Millstone and clear conditions. She charges Hearn. She wraps to the 2, dealing 2 damage and 2 inches of push, moving him into Grange's melee. Her last attack does 4 damage. She drops her Harvest Marker. Zack activates Theron and charges Fallow. I declare a defensive stance. His charge does 2 damage. Theron buys another attack and does 2 damage. He uses Blessing on himself and snipes her for another 1 damage through the tough hide. I activate Fallow and pick up 2 Harvest Markers for 4 more influence. She attacks Chaska and does 4 damage and gets stuck in. This allows her to ignore the ganging up and crowding out penalties but she still benefits from Honest Labor, so it actually nets me a die here. Her second attack wraps by 1, doing 6 damage. Her third attack does 4 damage and takes out Chaska. The score is now 6-4. to four. Fallow attacks Hearn, doing a momentous knockdown. Her last attack goes against Hearn, doing momentous 3 damage. Zack activates Egret and uses Flurry on Harrow, dealing 2 damage and poison to Harrow, Grange, and Peck. Millstone takes Peck's poison. I activate Peck and play Sikkim. I clock out. I declare the charge at Hearn and drop the ball to Grange on the way. I bonus time the charge and score 7 net hits, which means I wrap 4 times, doing 8 damage under Honest Labor. Peck buys an attack and does 6 damage, taking out Hearn. The score is now 8-4. Peck's activation ends, and Zack scores due to my clock out. Score is now 8-5. to five. This ends the turn. Farmers are leading the momentum race 12-2. to two. I choose to go first. I pull two harvest markers for extra influence, and allocate 6 to Grange, 4 to Tater, 1 to Fallow, 1 to Millstone, and 1 to Peck. Zack jogs Chaska and Hearn back on the pitch. He allocates 1 to Fahad, 2 to Chaska, 3 to Hearn, and 6 to Theron. I activate Grange and sprint over to Fahad and within goal range. 
Grange attacks Fahad doing a momentous knockdown. His second attack does a momentous honest labor. His third attack does a push. His fourth attack does momentous two damage. He takes a shot on goal with bonus time and sinks it. Final score, 12-5. This post-game analysis is made possible by the Patreon support of viewers like you. This matchup had some fairly interesting dynamics between the farmer's ability to prevent conditions and the hunter's knack for putting them everywhere. I made a fairly large mistake early, throwing Grange away, but thankfully I was able to recover from it. Grange is a lot like Tapper in that he needs to pull a ton of the team's weight, but losing him can be a disaster. The other interesting part of this game is how dangerous both of our mascots are. Fahad gains plus one damage from Snared, and Zorola can put it out, then immediately make him charge for huge damage numbers. While Peck has only a too long playbook, so under Honest Labor, has an insane charge that has higher expected damage output than Buckwheat. If you want to see the other side of this matchup, where I play Thresher into Hunters, go check out episode 20 of Beard Minis. But here I would like to pass the question on to you. What were our mistakes this game? Would you have made different decisions during the game? Let me know in the comments down below. Hit that like button, it helps other Guild Ball players find this video. Hit the subscribe button to know the moment I upload a new video. And share this with your friends. I'm Vincent Kirkov, and this has been Run the Length.